Hi and welcome to this week's portrait painting demonstration. My name is Yupari and this week we're going to be covering a limited palette that I like to call the Simple Palette. The Simple Palette consists of flake white replacement, titanium white, burnt umber, alizarin crimson, cadmium red light, yellow ochre, sap green, cerulean blue, and ultramarine blue. My preferred paint brand is actually Gamblin Paints, with the exception of my Titanium White, which is a Lucas Studio, but the Gamblin should work just as fine. I'm going to start this portrait the same way I usually do, using a diluted burnt umber and a bristle brush, establishing the large shapes and proportions, but generally working with the gesture of the head and trying to get the placement. I found that the color that you use in the beginning to establish your block in drawing tends to affect the overall outcome of the painting. Uh, now you can eliminate this by starting off with a soft fine charcoal block in and then covering over with paint. But I, I find that the effects of starting off with burnt umber are generally not that severe. I feel that it's important to start off rather loose and gesturally and not too tight in the beginning. Uh, because what can happen is that you get too hyper focused on your measurements and you can never really get it right first try. That just, I don't think anyone has ever done that. So you have to be somewhat open-minded to changes in your drawing as you progress further in your painting. It's important in the beginning to start with something. Don't try to be too formulaic or too calculated. Just put something down and work with it. You can always paint on top of it. Paint, oil paint is very versatile. It takes hours to dry and it's made for the user to work directly on top of it for long periods of time. Now I start my usual paintings uh, in the same way, my usual Ala Prima portrait paintings. Um, with this burnt umber, sometimes I'll go more directly into color, um, but in general this is usually the way I work. Um, but later on we will discuss more of the limited palette that I like to call simple palette techniques and mixtures. But for this stage of the portrait painting, I'm just establishing my major proportions. So I'm going to be using some burnt umber, ultramarine blue, and a little bit of alizarin crimson to mix up a nice rich dark for the hair mass. So whenever I'm working on a white or untoned canvas, I usually work from the darkest darks up. Uh, now this is just because it's more convenient for me to work that way with an untoned canvas. But you could work either way I suppose. It's just a way that's easier for me. So I'm mixing some cerulean blue, ultramarine blue, and a little bit of white that flake white replacement that is. And I'm going to be mixing up a dark blue background color. So let's take a minute to talk about my materials. So I use a regular odorless paint thinner. I picked that up at Michael's. Stand oil and I mix about one fifth stand oil to the rest paint thinner in that little container you saw and shake it up and that is my medium that I use on the right. My preferred brushes are Princeton Catalyst Polytip Bristle and I really really like them because they're a mix between synthetic and bristle. So this is just a basic bristle brush from Utrecht and I use that to block in. 
So now I'm now going color to be mixer. using this simple palette to mix up basic flesh tones. So to start off we have cadmium red light. We're going to be mixing some yellow ochre to create a nice orange flake white replacement. And we're going to cool this mixture down with a little bit of burnt umber. So burnt umber is relatively cool compared to the colors we just used. And so is my white. Although the reason I use flake white replacement actually is because it's, it has a thicker consistency. That color I just used was cerulean blue. And uh, so yeah, the flake white replacement is just a thicker white than my regular titanium white, and that's the only reason I have it, as opposed to just having titanium white. I'm cleaning up my brush with the uh, odorless paint thinner. And so now we're gonna mix a gray, so ultramarine blue, and burnt umber. So we're gonna work from the cool colors to the warm colors. So with the flake white replacement to create a nice gray. And we're gonna warm it up with the cadmium red light and back to the yellow ochre. And then we're gonna just bring it back up with the titanium white. So this is a cooler and lighter basic flesh tone. And now these colors that I'm demonstrating for you are just to get you in a ballpark, just to get you in a in a, a range of believability with fresh tones, and you can make these colors lighter, you can make them warmer, you can make them cooler, you can adjust them however you want, but this is just a basic demonstration of the basic flesh tones. And I'm going to just put some of the paint on my hand. I wouldn't recommend doing this, but just to show you how close these colors can get to your true skin tones. So I'm now going to attempt to use this simple palette demonstration to color match a painting that I did in the past. So at first attempt you can see that color is too warm and dark. So I'm going to cool it with some titanium white and some cerulean blue. And I'm going to warm it with some yellow ochre and use some more titanium white and see if this works. And it does. Mind you, this painting was done with a more extended palette, so that goes to show you what you can do with this simple palette. So back to the Alla Prima painting demonstration. So I'm going to be mixing up a greenish color and go on top with a warmer, warmer mixture, and I'm attempting to mix the shadow color. Now it's my first guess at the shadow color, and I don't expect it to be right. It's just something to get me started. So I'm now going to be mixing up the flesh colors. So I'm going to start with something that's a little bit warmer and darker to begin with so that I can build up my values and work cooler. Uh, so I'm using a mixture of yellow ochre, cadmium red light, and both of my whites to make up this basic mixture. And it's roughly the same as the demonstration of colors that I made for you earlier. Now the reason that I work a little bit darker and warmer in the beginning is because as I build up my values I'll be using a lot of white and white itself is a coolant, as I've explained before in other videos. So I'd rather be able to build my colors from warm to cool using my coolant than to go from cool to warm and risk my colors getting 
too cold and too dead. So I'm now going to be mixing up my generic value scale made up of basic flesh tones. So I'm starting off with my titanium white, cadmium red light, and yellow ochre to create my lighter flesh tones, as you can see there. And uh, as I go darker, I tend to get a little bit in the warmer colors, and I like to put like a cool patch of paint right next to it so that I can easily cool down a color. So this simple palette is, um, is very good for sketches and uh, very low chroma paintings, but I usually use a more extended palette that I like to call an unlimited palette, and I'll go over that in future videos. But to get started off, it's, uh, it's a little easier to start off with a more limited palette. And, um, well, the reason I added a few more colors in this palette is because I find the basic limited palettes out there to be a little too limited. And, um, well, you can work with whatever colors you want. And I'm just trying to give you a nice ballpark range to get started. You can certainly eliminate one of the blues being probably the cerulean blue, uh, but I just included it in there because you can't really get that deep of a rich blue without it. Uh, so I find it pretty necessary in terms of a primary color. If you think about the broad spectrum of colors that you can mix with the limited palette, Imagine what you can do once you start adding more colors and experimenting with them and figuring out different com color combinations and different ways to use the colors. stage of the El Prima portrait, I'm building up the basic planes of the face. I'm still not too worried about getting the exact proportions, but rather I'm trying to work broadly across the large structures of the face and sculpt the general planes of the face. And if I get the large structures right of the face, it should make it much more easy to put the placement of the eye, nose, and mouth, and such, but it's important for me to get the large structure in check. Once I have the large underlying structures in check, I will use a non-intrusive color as like a burnt umber, like a grayed out burnt umber, to go back in and re-establish my drawing. So I'm going in with fine lines as if I were using a pencil or a large charcoal piece and establishing where all of my placements go. Now it's I find it much easier to do this once I already have an underlying scaffolding established. So I'm putting my foot down on the eye on the left of the canvas. So I'm going to establish that eye and I'm going to relate the other eye next to it and I'm going to think about the distances between the eyes in relation to the distance say from the eyes to the nose and from the eyes to the forehead so I'm going to be relating these distances It's enough for me to put a line to suggest the bottom of the nose and a simple brush mark or two to establish the 
ending points of the mouth in relation to the entire structure of the face. And now these are only going to be place markers for me, as if it, were, it was a pencil drawing and I was putting down these fine measurements. Uh, but since I have this underlying structure to look at, it's making the placements relatively simple. So once I've established where the features are going to fit into the large underlying structure of the head, I'm going to make, be mixing up the white of the eye known as the sclera with a little bit of a cool gray on top of my flesh colors. It, it tends to be the case that the, this color for the sclera of the eyes, that is the white of the eye, it, it tends to lean towards a cooler color but now you don't want it to be too cool because then their eyes are going to look stained like a stained blue and you don't want them to be too worn because then you're going to give them pink eye and that's not good though so always remember that color is relative now some people may have a sclera that is warmer than others and some people may have them cooler than others but it's important that you get the relationship between the colors surrounding the white of the eye or the sclera it's important that you get the relationships correct now i know that it's lighter in value to what i'm painting currently the nose and it's cooler also keep in mind that the color that you mix is only going to be as valid as the value that you give it. If you don't study the values of your colors closely enough, then it doesn't matter if you can get the right color. It really, it really matters that you understand what the values are first. This is why almost every academic art school will start off their students with a fairly limited palette. Some schools will have you use only a cadmium red or an orange with a black and a white. And it, these exercises are useful because you're really thinking about the value first. And once you get your values in check, then you can start experimenting with color. Here's an example of getting experimental with the color. So I know that the iris is a little bit lighter than the underplane of the eyelid. And so I'm going to exploit that fact in mixing up a lighter but warmer color because I, for some reason I feel like I want to push the warmth in her iris. And you can do that. You can push your color relationships however you want, as long as you keep your values in check. With every Ella Prima painting that I paint for you all, I usually show you guys the details last. And this is because I save the details for last. I save the smaller shapes for the end because if you think about painting as a structural thing, if you think about it as existing in three-dimensional space, think about it like building a house. You're not going to build the house with the windows first. You're not going to build the house with the doorknob. And so you can think of these details like the reflection of the light on, the, on her glasses. You can think of it as a window curtain of some sort added to the larger structure that is the portrait. Details are to a painting what the icing is to the cake. To get to the icing you gotta build the cake. To get to the details of the painting you gotta build the structure. Just know that the limited palette approach is very useful at making colored paintings that are focused on values, but there is a way to surpass it. 
once you learn how to use these simple colors, you can branch out to more complex colors and more complex color combinations. Thanks again for watching this week's portrait painting demonstration and stay tuned for more weekly videos.